Hey everyone, welcome back to Fuzzy Logic Lectures. In the last few videos, we covered the three different types of graphical techniques of inferences, and they were the Mamdani method, Sugina method, and the Sukumoto method. In this lecture, we'll be doing a solved example that constitutes all the three methods. So let's get started. The question given here is, consider a system with the following rules. Rule 1 is, if x is a1 and y is b1, then z1 is c1. And rule 2 is given as, if x is a2 or y is b2, then z2 is c2. We have also been given the values of x and y as 3 and 4 respectively. Apart from this, the equations of z1 and z2 is given as, z1 is equal to x plus 3y minus 6, and z2 is given as 2x plus y minus 7. We all know that in the case of Sugina method, the output or the consequent should be a function of the inputs as given in the antecedent. And that is why the equations for z1 and z2 is given in the question. Now we have also been provided with the fuzzy sets a1, b1, c1 and a2, b2 and c2. And here mu in all these cases represent the membership value. And also the monotonic membership function of the consequent is given here. As you can see, you have the monotonic membership functions for Z1 and Z2 because this is what is required in the case of Sukumoto model. So the first step that we need to do in the case of all the three methods is we need to find out the corresponding membership values for the inputs X and Y. That is, we need to find out the corresponding membership values for 3 and 4. Let's do for 3. So what we have to do is we have x over here and we'll extend 3 and when we extend 3 we will get the corresponding membership value of 3 as 0.3. Therefore the corresponding membership value of 3 will be 0.3. Similarly we should find out the corresponding membership value for 4 in the case of rule 1. So let us extend 4 and we'll get it as 0.6. Therefore, the corresponding membership value of 4 will be 0.6 in the case of rule 1. Similarly, we need to find out the corresponding membership values for 3 and 4 in the case of rule 2. So first let us do for 3. We will take the 0.3 and we will extend it to get the corresponding membership value. And we get it as 0.7. Therefore, 0.7 will be the corresponding membership value for 3 in the case of rule 2. And when we do for 4, we will get it as 0.8. Therefore, 0.8 will be the corresponding membership value for 4 in the case of rule 2. Now that we have found out the corresponding membership values of both x and y in the case of rule 1 and rule 2, let us apply the different graphical techniques of inferences starting with the Mamdani method. So what we need to do first in the Mamdani method is that we need to either take the maximum of the membership values of x and y or we take the minimum of the membership values of x and y depending on what type of connector the two rules are connected by. As in, since rule 1 is connected by the AND operator, we have to take the minimum of the membership values of x and y. That is, we take the minimum of 0.3 and 0.6 which is 0.3. If anyone has any doubt in this concept, Please refer lecture 17 of our fuzzy logic playlist. I have provided the link in the description below. So we will take 0.3 and we will extend it onto our output graph. So when we extend it, we will be getting this area. So let me shade this area. Now I am applying the max min Mamdani inference method. You can even apply the max product inference method. But again, it depends upon the question. Since in this question, it is not specified on which type of inference method to use, I have used the maximum inference method. And because of that, as you can see, I have obtained a truncated membership function at the end. Similarly, we should do for rule 2. And as you can see, in the case of rule 2, our antecedents are connected by the OR operator. And since they are connected by the OR operator, we should take the maximum of the membership values of x and y. That is, we should take the maximum of 0.7 and 0.8, which is of course 0.8. So let me extend 0.8 onto the output graph. 
So when I extend 0 0.8, I'll be getting this entire area and I'll be shading this area. And again here we have obtained another truncated membership function. Now we need to draw the graph for the aggregated output Z comprising of both Z1 and Z2 and it will be given as this graph. As you can see we have the aggregated graphs of Z1 and Z2. Now let us mark the membership values of Z1 and Z2 as we have obtained earlier. In the case of Z1, we have obtained a membership value of 0.3. Therefore, let us mark 0.3 in case of graph Z1. So we have 0.3 and we will get it as this point. Similarly, for the output graph Z2, we have obtained a corresponding membership value for Z2 as 0.8. So let us mark 0.8 in the aggregated output graph. So we will have 0.8 and that will be from here to here. Now let us shade the entire aggregated output and we will get it as this entire area. Therefore this entire area becomes our aggregated output graph. Now that we have obtained the aggregated output, we need to find out the defalsified value Z star. And to do that, we are going to apply any of the defalsification methods. If anyone has any confusion in how to do the defalsification methods, please refer lecture 9, 10 and 11 of our fuzzy logic playlists. I have provided the link in the description below. Now I'll be applying the weighted average defalsification method and the formula is given as Z star is equal to W1 into Z1 bar plus W2 into Z2 bar divided by W1 plus W2, where W1 and W2 are the membership values of Z1 and Z2 respectively, whereas Z1 bar and Z2 bar are the center of gravity of Z1 and Z2 respectively. So our W1 or the corresponding membership value of Z1 is given as 0.3 and our W2 which is our corresponding membership value for Z2 is given as 0.8. And the center of gravity of Z1 which is Z1 bar will be equal to 5 in this case and the center of gravity for Z2 which is Z2 bar will be equal to 2.5 in this case as in the center of gravity Z2 bar will be 2.5. So we have Z1 bar which is equal to 5 and Z2 bar which will be equal to 2.5. Now that we have all the values, let us substitute it in this equation to find Z star. So we have Z star which is equal to W1 into Z1 bar which is 0.3 into 5 plus W2 into Z2 bar which is 0.8 into 2.5 and this entire thing will be divided by W1 plus W2 which is 0.3 plus 0.8. And this will be equal to 3.181 or we can say that Z star is approximately equal to 3.18 and that becomes a defalsified value Z star. So this is how you do in the case of Mamdani method. Next let's move on to Sugino method. So when we go back to a question, we can see that we are provided the equations for Z1 and Z2. Because we know that in the case of Sugino method, we have to take the consequent which will be a function of the inputs as given in the antecedent. So here Z1 is given as x plus 3y minus 6 and Z2 is given as 2x plus y minus 7. And we need to substitute the value of x and y onto these two equations. Now if anyone has any doubt in how to do Sugino method, please refer lecture 18 of our fuzzy logic playlist. I have also provided the link in the description below. So we have our equations here and we have our inputs. Now let us substitute the inputs into the equation. So we have Z1 which is equal to x plus 3y minus 6 which is 3 plus 3 into 4 12 minus 6 and this will give us a value of 9 and we have Z2 which is equal to 2x plus y minus 7 which is 2 into 3 which is 6 plus y 4 minus 7 and this will give us a value 3. Therefore z1 is 9 and z2 will be 3. 
Now, when we go back to our graph, we can see that we have already found out the corresponding membership values for 3 and 4 in the case of rule 1 and rule 2. As you can see, we have already found it out, which is 0.3 and 0.8 for Z1 and Z2. Therefore, we can directly use it in the case of Sugino method. As in, we can say that our membership value 1, which is a corresponding membership value of Z1, will be 0.3 and our corresponding membership value for Z2 will be 0.8. And now that we have found out the values of W1, W2, Z1 and Z2, let us apply the weighted average defalsification method in order to find out the defalsified value Z star. So we have Z star which will be equal to W1 into Z1 plus W2 into Z2 and this entire thing divided by W1 plus W2. So let us substitute the values. We have 0 0.3 into 9, 0 0.3 into 9 plus 0 0.8 into 3, 0 0.8 into 3 and this entire thing divided by 0 0.3 plus 0 0.8, 0 0.3 plus 0 0.8. And this will be equal to 4.636 or we can say that the Z star value will be approximately equal to 4.64. So this is how you solve in the case of Sugino method. Lastly, we have the Sukumoto method. So in the case of Sukumoto method, we know that we have to consider the monotonic membership functions for the output. So as you can see, we have the monotonic membership functions for Z1 and Z2. If anyone has any doubts in Sukumoto method, please refer lecture 19 of our fuzzy logic playlist. I have provided the link in the description below. Now we have already found out the corresponding membership values for X and Y as 0.3 and 0.8 respectively. So let us extend 0.3 onto the output graph so that we can get the corresponding Z1 value. So when I extend 0.3, I'm going to get it as 3.5. Therefore, our Z1 value or our output Z1 will be 3.5 in the case of rule 1. Now similarly, when we do for the case of rule 2, we have to extend 0.8 onto the output graph so we can get the corresponding Z2 value. So let us extend 0.8 and we will get the corresponding Z2 value as 3. Therefore, our corresponding Z2 value will be 3 when our W2 is 0.8. Now that we have obtained the values of W1, Z1 and W2 and Z2, let us apply it in the weighted average defalsification method to find Z star. So, we have W1 which is equal to 0.3 and Z1 which is equal to 3.5. We have W2 which is equal to 0.8 and we have Z2 which is equal to 3 as we have found over here. So now when we apply the weighted average defalsification method Z star, we have it as W1 into Z1 plus W2 into Z2 and this entire thing divided by W1 plus W2. So when we substitute the values, we have 0.3 into 3.5 plus 0.8 into 3 and this thing divided by 0.3 plus 0.8 and this will be equal to 3.136 or we can say that the defalsified value Z star will be approximately equal to 3.14 in the case of Sukumoto method. So as you can see, I have solved this example with the help of Mamdani, Sugino and Sukumoto method. I hope the concepts that were taught in this lecture were clear to all of you. If anyone has any doubts, please feel free to ask in the comment section below. Either we or another viewer will surely help you out. If you found this lecture to be useful, please like the video and support us by subscribing to the channel. In the next lecture, we'll be learning about fuzzy control systems. Thank you for watching Toffoli and have a great day.